Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to take another look at self inductance and how it affects a circuit. It affects a circuit by putting a potential difference across the inductor that will either increase or decrease the current flow. So let's take a look. First of all, we're going to go back to Faraday's law. Faraday's law says that the loop integral or the complete integral around the closed loop of the electric field times the path length is going to be equal to the negative change of the magnetic flux per unit time through a loop. Wow, what does that mean? Really what it means is when the flux through a loop changes, it will cause an electric field to exist along the conductor in the loop and as we then travel along that conductor, that means do the integral uh, and we take the electric field along that conductor and multiply it times the path length, that will then exactly equal the change in the flux to the loop per unit time. Now notice here in this case we just made it simple. We have a single loop where n equals 1 so we don't have n appearing in our equations. Well we know from previous videos that the voltage across a gap is equal to the electric field between the two endpoints times the distance traveled. So using that same principle the electric field strength times the distance traveled really accounts for a voltage difference and that's how we know that when we integrate along a closed loop where the inductance where the um, flux through the loop changes, we know that we're going to then set up what we call an EMF induced. An EMF induced is just another word of saying there's a voltage across the loop which drives a current. So now we know the EMF induced is basically a voltage and we can calculate that by taking the electric field inside the conductor and multiply times the length of the panels so will go around the loop and if we then integrate it around the whole loop that is then equal to the change of the flux per unit time through the loop. So now we know where this equation came from. Now we can also say that the change in the flux per unit time is equal to the self-inductance times the change in the current per unit time because what causes a change in the flux? It's the self-inductance and the change in the current. The change in the current through the self-inductance causes an EMF and causes a change in, of course, the flux through the loop. And since we can equate the two like this, we can then say that the EMF induced is equal to the negative of the self-inductance times the change in the current per unit time. With other words, if the current increases, then the EMF induced is positive, or is negative because it's the negative of the increase, and if the current decreases, then the EMF induced is positive. So it's always the opposite sign. The current increases, EMF is negative, current decreases, EMF is positive. So now let's look at this circuit and try to make sense out of this. Let's say we have a, ver a variable power source, a variable battery that we can increase or decrease. Of course, when we increase it, we increase the current. When we decrease it, we decrease the current. Current is traveling in this direction. Notice, it has to go across an inductor and through a resistor. With the resistor, we already know what's going to happen. Regardless if the current is increasing or decreasing, if the current is going from right to left across the resistor, then on the right side we'll have a higher potential, a higher voltage. On the left side we'll have a lower potential or a lower volt voltage. So when we travel across the resistor in the direction of the current, there will be a voltage drop. There will be a lower voltage on this side than that side. But what about an inductor? Does the voltage drop? Does the voltage rise? Does the voltage stay the same? What really happens? Well, all three will happen depending upon the situation. The voltage will remain constant, meaning there's no voltage drop or voltage rise. The voltage is the same on both sides of the inductor when the current remains constant. So when I is constant, there will be absolutely no voltage drop across the inductor, which means there's absolutely no opposition to the current. It's like that inductor isn't even there. You might as well take it out and it would make no difference. But what happens now when the current increases or when the current decreases, then something happens. First of all, when the current increases, then the inductor jumps into action and tries to oppose that increase. So an inductor opposes an increase, so just like the resistor opposes a current, the inductor opposes an increase in the current and they begin to act in the exact same way. They oppose that flow of that current. In one hand is the holding back of the increase in the current for the resistor is simply holding back the current in general. So they will act in the very same way and so when the current increases the inductor will oppose that increase just like the resistor will impose, oppose the current so in both cases there will be a voltage drop across the device. 
in the current of in the case of inductor, inductor there's a voltage drop because it opposes the increase in the current. In the case of resistor, it opposes a voltage drop because it simply opposes the current. So a voltage drop will occur when the current increases. So when the change in the current is greater than zero, means when it increases, there will be a voltage drop across the inductor. Now, what happens when the current begins to decrease? Well, when the current begins to decrease, the inductor will try to oppose that decrease. How does it do that? By trying to keep the current going. So the inductor almost becomes like a battery now, tries to maintain that current, tries to drive the current through the circuit. Even though the battery is being toned down, the inductor will then act like a battery momentarily and try to keep that current flowing. So in this case, the inductor will act like a battery, and since the battery has a voltage rise when you go across like this, from low voltage to high voltage, the inductor will then go from low voltage to high voltage, and there will be a voltage rise across the inductor. And that will happen when the change in the current is negative, when it's less than zero. In other words, when the, when the, the change in the current is negative, when the current begins to decrease, the inductor tries to keep the current going, and therefore the inductor will experience a voltage rise across it, acting like a battery just momentarily to try and keep the current going as the battery starts to diminish and the current begins to diminish, the inductor momentarily just tries to keep the current going. And hopefully that will give you another look at what we mean by self-inductance. Self-inductance is simply how the inductor is affected by itself and in this case it's affected by a change in the current. Remember a change in the current will cause a change in the flux. The change in the flux will cause an electric field to exist. When we integrate the electric field around the loop, we realize there will be a potential difference caused by that, which will drive a current that will try to oppose the change. If the current increases, there will be a current created in the opposite direction to keep the current from increasing. If the current decreases, it will create a current in the same direction to try and keep the current from decreasing. And that, again, is an inductor and self-inductance.